Hey, hey, Emmanuel Echeta. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yeah, basically. Emmanuel Echeta. Echeta. Okay, so thank you for um, you know, joining me here. Um, I'm very much interested in your tweets on feminism or women in general. And but before I begin, I, I just really want you to share the two books that are out there that you've um, written. Um, they are nonfiction, as you stated. So do you mind sharing um, and telling us where we can go buy these books? What the books are about? Mm, yeah. They're actually fiction. Both are fiction. Um, one is Remnants, The Advent of Light. It's actually it's a post-apocalyptic book. It talks about what the world would be like if it was a bit destroyed, if it was an apocalypse caused by um fluctuation of the magnetic waves on the world so it basically just talks about the rearrangement of the society basing itself on the us the new nations that could spring up based on various ideologies and their interactions military interactions mostly the technological advancements and the and the the goals and aspirations of the people then mm -hmm. mostly that and the second one, it's it's more Nigerian themed, um, Afro fantasy, frequent return. It talks about a young man who gains a certain ability. I don't need to reveal too much about it, though, but it's basically right. written for Nigeria. I I try to get it to the Nigerian market. With it. It's very short, but I I I used it, so I'm using it to get it to the Nigerian book markets. Okay. And so, so for example, um, the, the first book about uh, magnetic, if, if someone is interested in adopting the book, say for college setting or so, uh, where would it be situated? Where would your, your text be more situated? In which discipline? I didn't get that. Would it be? I didn't get that. Sorry. If, if someone wishes to adopt your, your book, the book that you wrote about um, magnetic um, uh, is it magnetic reasoning? Uh, please forgive yeah, me. Um, where magnetic. would this book be situated? Which discipline would be um, would it be more appropriate for in college in a college setting, for example? Mm, I think sociology. sociology. I think sociology. Yeah, sociology and um, well, interpersonal relations is still sociology. So yeah. Very interesting. And so it's a, it's a wide range of um, areas in sociology, so I'm sure we both fit. Well, thank you. And you also mentioned that you're a ghostwriter, that you write various scripts. And I can see that in terms just the way, the way that you, um, you know, the information that you send out there in, in terms of your, your philosophy on women. Can you just share in general, though, because most of your tweet seems to be general, especially in regards to feminism or women in general. So um, can you share your philosophy, just a short philosophy on how you view feminism? The study well, of actually, actually, unfortunately, I was contracted for a ghostwriting job to write a book, a, detail, a detailed book on feminism. I actually had to make research on feminism, I went as far back as reading about the early feminists, um, the movement, how it was all tied in a way to the American Civil War, mm -hmm. the years, the late 1800s, down to the the women who came from the UK, feminists who came from the UK, Alice Parker also, Alice Baker, who came from the UK to the US, and the whole fighting, the whole protesting the whole everything that was done they are views all the way to 1920 when the law was passed 20th amendment or so so i did a lot of research on it so i understood it i was able to live with them you know what you know what it is to actually research and write a book well okay. it was supposed to be a historical fiction so I, I actually had to become a feminist to understand what they were fighting for why they were fighting. I understood it and I agreed, I accepted it. I appreciated the 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 movement actually. So today I get to see that they are still feminists, which I feel okay, it's fine if they are still there. But many of them have deviated from the movement. There are times when you ask a feminist what's 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 the movement about? And they tell you the same thing that 
um, this woman in the 1900s, early early 1900s, were saying, "It's like it's like they never won. It's like they never they never won. It's, it's like they never had any victory." And so a hundred years later, you're still fighting for the same things they were fighting, which doesn't make any sense. Yes, there are countries where those the women's rights is or women's rights are not respected. There are some countries. Well, you can't be in a country, a, a, a free, a democratic state or society, and you're still fighting for the same things that have already been fought for and won a hundred years ago. So in essence, you're just it's like we're just flogging a dead horse. Or some, something like that. Or I don't think there's there's much to fight in that regard. There could be new goals, there could be new things to to fight for, but not those same ones of men and women don't have equal rights at work. When I know a bank manager who is a woman, I know a judge who is a woman, mm -hmm. I know female engineers. So you can't just say that there are no opportunities to work. So so, so you, you... The, my philosophy. Okay, my philosophy is that there should be new goals. Feminism should exist. Yes, I'm not saying it shouldn't exist, but you have to you have to make new goals, not the old ones, because eventually, when it seems as if there are no there are no new goals, and most of them they become misandrists. They they start hating men in general, blaming men for every single issue that men and women have. And, and and some of this is based on research information that you've gathered, gathered uh, your personal observation, and also just general experience in, in your society. Yes? Yeah. So you're saying at this point, based on the research, the woman's um, ideology about feminism and what they, they are fighting for, or their purpose towards equality, seems redundant at this point and they need to 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 seek out new pathways to to let you know to talk about in terms of women in society that's what you're saying yes yeah, there should be new goals the the equality has already or equality of opportunity actually has already mm -hmm. been met like there is a there's a female prime minister in the uk if i'm correct yes and in okay. italy they just put in new female president so we are seeing women ruling the world so you to for you to then come out and say women aren't privileged as men but they are like two major european nations where women are the leaders it's it's a bit it requires some thoughts okay so with the um with this mindset then or this philosophy that is guiding how you or you write or you you know the your output um do you have any ideas of possibly at least even one goal that you know the women's, for example, the Me Too movement could take on? Um. Yes, I have one. I think mm -hmm. one that a few many people are not really talking about, and it's it's surprising why they are not. The the radical gender ideology these days. It's something that women should actually pay attention to, because mm -hmm. if if, if we can't actually define women, if we can't actually define women and 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 have this this situation where we could say these are women, it's not men who, who transition to women. We we it's going to have an effect on the feminist movement because if we want if feminists want to have something for women and she or they can't see this are for the women. We have to say maybe trans women or cis women or any of that. It blows their lines. It blows the lines. It makes the movement to be too not as strong as it should. So, anyways, they should look towards resisting the seemingly the seeming erasure of women of women as a gender by the growing radical ideology in the West these days. So that should be that should be a, a new battle, battle, quote, battle front. Emmanuel, forgive me. I, I, I it's possible that I may not under, understand what you you just said. Could you clarify for me what you're saying? You mentioned something about trans women, um, or, you know, men moving into the uh, woman arena as transgender. Uh, 
Um, I'm not sure I understand fully what you're telling me. Can you just explain again for me, please, if you don't mind? Well, there's a, there is a documentary. I believe the name is What is a Woman? Okay. So, yeah. So from my, in my culture, in my society, and from what I've always known, we know who women are. We know what women are. We can define women. Women are this. Women are, we can identify women. But the documentary showed that many people were either scared, clueless, or couldn't actually define women. So if there's going to be a women's rights movement, and in such a society, in the same society, mm -hmm. the definition of a woman or the existence of a woman is ambiguous. How then can you say you're fighting for women's rights okay. when we can't actually reach a conclusion or an agreement on what a woman is, first of all? What are the rights of a woman? What's a woman? When you answer that question, you cannot talk about the rights. Okay, fair enough. And, and I think you're talking about Matt Walsh, is, uh, is that his name? Um, yeah what what is a woman and documentary and you say that also enhances your your philosophy on the subject of women's rights women's equality and feminism yes yes on the subject matter okay fair fair enough and so if if so if someone you know read your tweets you're on you know on your twitter page um some of it is sar um, sarcasm some of it is you have to really um there's you know a, a level of irony in, in involved and some of it is just very straightforward it's as if you know you're saying this and so how would you help a layman understand i would say a woman who wants to understand a male's perspective on womanhood on feminism or women in general how would you help them understand your tweet your tweet. Um. Well, first of all, they would have to be unbiased. They would have to read with an open mind, okay. not um, reading with this notion that maybe I'm a misogynist, first of all, not believing that, okay, he's a misogynist, he's going to be insulting women, or that I'm a red pill account um, person or owner. Read with an open mind, because I try to, the reason I use threads is to ensure that I can cover a lot of points on that opinion. I don't just say something it's this and then maybe you have to misconstrue it or misunderstand it or mm -hmm. derive your own understanding. I, I, I try to answer a lot of questions in the trade, try to make a lot of points, counter arguments sometimes and mm -hmm. I reach a conclusion and I hope by then if you had read the eight tweets worth of trades or the ten tweets worth of the trade, you should be able to understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm trying to do that as much as possible already with my use of threads, which I actually view as articles. It's, I'll see. Is there any satire in your tweets? Is it very serious? Is it very deep? And um, because, you know, social media is a learning tool for a lot of people nowadays. And sometimes you have to sift through as you, you know, the, the, the information and try to understand, okay, is this for, for real? Is there a foundation for these arguments? How serious should anybody take these tweets that you're mentioning about women? For example, let me give you an example of one of the tweets that you said. And here I am, I'm trying to take a neutral approach as well because I want to learn from you. I love the perspective that you're sharing because over the years you do not have um, this type of outlet um, you know, to where you have men being so open um, with their with their opinion or their criticism or views about any particular subject, especially when it comes to women. So you said here, women always want society to rub their backs. This is a very recent tweet. Um, and tell them they've been wronged, even when they did the wrong. It's why some men knock them with just your boyfriend dumped you. That guy doesn't know what he lost. Come over so we can watch Power. The game is the game. I'm thinking Power is that TV series that was on Showtime. Uh, was it? No, Stars, right? Stars TV. Okay, what do you mean by that? Well, it was actually, I I, I, I made that tweet in correlation to a, an issue that was going up on Twitter then. Mm -hmm. I think, I'm trying to remember the exact topic. Mm. But someone, someone put out an opinion or someone told a story or her mm -hmm. story or a story. So the story went certain way. I've forgotten the exact details, but we weren't or 
were expected not to actually judge the matter on a neutral basis because it was a woman. And I feel many people do that. Many people, many people feel like, okay, if it's a woman, don't be too harsh. Mm. Try to understand from her point of view and some things like that. So the tweet was kind of related to that and saying that when a woman does something, not just on a societal level, but on a personal level, which is fine, it's okay. I've noticed it a lot. Mm-hmm. But you 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 are not you're not supposed to let me say scold her for it. You're not supposed to tell her that she's wrong. Mm-hmm. For example, from the context of the tweets, if maybe if you've been reading all that tweets in relation to that. In relationship, maybe in a relationship, it goes off. You hardly hear a relationship that went off because maybe the boyfriend did something wrong, mm-hmm. or the boyfriend did something wrong. The boyfriend, okay, or the girlfriend. Sorry, the girlfriend did something wrong. The girlfriend. It's always the boyfriend was this, the boyfriend was that, the boyfriend was this. Usually, that's what you hear. It's as if there are no relationships where the girl maybe messed up and mm-hmm. her actions caused the end of relationship. Yes. Yeah, so, in that context. I said that some guys, knowing that girls like this or women like this mm-hmm. don't want to be told that okay, you messed up, mm-hmm. they make them feel like they were wrong the moment they messed up. And it makes them to, with that, that, that feeling of acceptance or validation or justification, guys use it to take advantage of them. So it was meant to call out that issue and it was also meant to tell women that mm-hmm. when men do this, even if you do not know that you did wrong, when you have a man always telling you, because I've already tweeted about that before, mm-hmm. I made a long thread on it, that men who always, always agree, I talk about agreeable men, men who are always agreeing with women, um, not standing up, not calling out some things a woman does, but let's say they are women do, and all that. Those are men you should be cautious of because they are not in for the long term. And when I made that tweet, and this one you just read, I had some men actually telling me that I shouldn't have said that because I was ruining their game. So, <laughs> yeah, so I actually have a lot of women telling me that yes. they like what I do because I, sometimes I give them an advice. Even if I may seem to be um, maybe be harsh, I really give them an advice. If anyone takes this with seriously, you will know that, okay, this is, this is kind of thing you're not supposed to let a man do. But what I'm just saying is that it happens. This is what guys do and you, you let this happen because of how you do not want to be chastised or criticized for doing mm-hmm. something. And then when you, you in your, in your, your seeking for validation, a guy or a man who knows this could use it to take advantage of him. So, that's what it's so, so, so you're saying that it, it seems as if th- this idea of be, um, victimization, women find exactly. themselves... Yeah women find themselves in the role of being a victim and they it, it are you saying they may bask in it um and use it as as uh the, their their um i guess comfort area where okay i'm gonna rub your back because this has happened to you a man did, did this to you that's what you're saying yeah yes okay well thank you for that that's that's very clear so you know, everyone is entitled to their worldview. And, 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 you know, one of the things I've always appreciated about people, which I appreciate about you, is just the, 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 the power then within yourself to speak out, speak up or speak to. And, and so um, I'm hoping that whosoever read your tweets will see, um, will have a open mindset, as you say, just to understand that, okay, that's a person's opinion. And it can also be um, others' worldview as well. And, and I believe it is because there's so many people that gravitate towards your, your tweet. But I want to clarify something that you said in the beginning when you said, well, women keep fighting about inequality from even as early 1900. I would say even from as early as um, the 1600 in the making of America. And you said, well, I know some a woman who is a judge. I know a woman who is a bank manager. And I know a woman who probably is a security guard or something of the sort. Do you think it's um, there's, there's adequate policy? So we're talking equality, but we're also talking about adequacy or even equity, meaning 
yes, you know one or two or few women who are in those positions, but you may know a lot of men that occupy those positions. So is this something that, that should be pointed out then by a group of women or by a movement of women? That yes, we have a few women who are leaders occupying position um, of power or you know at, at a, a superior level. Is that enough for us to stop talking about equality, inequality? Well, theoretically, it's not. But, okay, I'll give you an example. I actually, uh, I studied engineering in school, mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in my faculty, where we had a lot of engineering departments, we had more of men. We had more of males than females. My department, mechanical engineering, were grossly 160-something, of which, for the most part, less than 10 were girls. We had a department, electrical engineering department. There were over 200, and just 20 were girls. We had a department, metallurgical and material engineering. They had, within that range of 100, 200, and just less than 10 were girls. So... We say tomorrow or in the future, in that instance, we have the engineering sector, let's say the the maybe the, the oil exploration industry or maybe the mining industry mm -hmm. related mm -hmm. industries. And then we have the top engineers, the, the directors or the CEOs or the managers of factories and rigs and all that. We have them as men. And you come to see that maybe you do not see any woman, or maybe see a woman in the midst of 20 men, you would you wouldn't just say, okay, there are not enough women here. We have to protest this. You would have to go back to what made them here, what brought them here in the first place, which was their knowledge of engineering. How was that gotten in school? Then you go to the school. How many women were training or studying to be engineers? There were very few. So in situations like this, you can't say that the lack of enough or an equal number of or a nearly equal number of women in maybe those positions is because of there is um, strictly a certain bias. Mm -hmm. It's because not enough women provided themselves to be in those positions. In the instance, in the exact instance I'm giving you now, only if you would say maybe the school did not admit them into engineering, which I, I wouldn't know that, but if I'm going to assume that maybe the school was fair in giving admissions, then it's nobody's fault but women who did not want to go into engineering's fault. So, so this is so, my specific answer. Yes, and that's an interesting example. Could it be then, could you look at it from the angle where it's not so much that women are making the decision, but the institutions, because we know institution guides how society runs, um, and as much as women in society wants to change how institutions run, that is not happening. So if um, institutions are probably slowly, um, you know, opening the doors towards equality for women, uh, equal numbers of women and men studying in engineer, for example, um, the, it's possible that from the out, um, an outsider will look and say, well, it appears as if women are not interested when we're at, it could be more of this larger structural issues where women are simply not getting the opportunity. Do you believe that could be a possibility? It could be a possibility. It could. Okay. I would call it maybe a systemic um, roadblock. You, could you repeat that? Yeah, we could call it a systemic roadblock to oh. entry on women into certain sectors. Okay, so you it's not so much that you're entertaining the thought then that women are not trying, um, but you also accept the fact that historically women um, are barred by institutions uh, and structural um, forces impact women's ability to move beyond certain points. Would you agree with that statement? Well, okay, before I maybe say if I agree or, don't, or not, I'll give another instance. Can I give another instance? 
Okay. Um, let's in the same institution I was in, we had certain certain um, departments, school departments that had more women than men. It was there was one of them actually, public health education now. It had a record twenty or thirty men or males or boys to over one hundred women. Hmm. But the ones who had twenty boys to two hundred women. So if we are saying that the institution could be playing a part in reducing opportunities to learn in certain areas, would you always also see that institutions are preventing men to go into those female dominated fair uh, enough <laughs> fair enough i like that <laughs> fair enough um that's a that's an excellent point um and you see so this is what happened to to us sometimes we our we our view from where we are seated or from where we're positioned, sometimes can be so one dimensional, right? We okay. see it one way, but then not the other way until it's explained to us. And that's why I wanted to talk to you because I feel that, okay, this cannot be one dimensional. I'm sure he's seeing a larger picture. He's seeing the, the whole circle. So thank you for that. Very good point. Okay, here's this one. Only women sting with every emotion. Anger, sadness, happiness, love, jealousy, lust, and so on. To be male is enough foundation for masculinity. Women can't be masculine. Many of them lack the mental fac um, faculties for it. I'm sure that is sarcasm. So go ahead and explain. <laughs> um, well, in the, in the context of the trade I made, I was talking about why men should be masculine and masculinity what I understand it from what I've observed is um, protecting, providing for those around you. So there was actually an issue on Twitter, I think some, let's say a month ago, they were talking about men who cry in public. Because mm -hmm. the man who cried wedding day, and it was controversial. And I made a point, I made a point, I made a, I actually made a thread, a long thread. And I tried to explain how it wasn't that we're saying men shouldn't be emotional. It wasn't that we we're saying men were supposed to be robots. But we're trying to say that <clears throat> in certain situations where maybe there is an incident or an accident or something bad happens and we have men and women there, we do not need to come there and see the men crying when the women are also crying. We, we do not, the women there would not want to see the men crying with them. Because from all we've always known, all we've always seen, read, watched, and heard, it's always this, maybe there's danger, and we'll be like, okay, let the women and the children go. Let the women and the children go. Even when, sometimes, when maybe kidnappers or terrorists abduct a certain group of people, it's always, the initial bargain is, okay, let the women and the children go first. So, generally, in society, felt by men and women, it's not expected to see men showing emotions in public, those emotions that show weakness, because there are situations where women, no matter what, they would, they would want to depend on a man because maybe the, the, the situation requires some form of strength, which at that point in time, we will have to agree that it's, with more, it will most likely be the men there who would be able to exert the strength for that. So if there is a situation that requires strength, but yeah, it requires a lot of exertion, we need to see the men pushing, fighting, punching, any of that, not crying or being scared. It's not like you're, you're supposed to not be scared, but if you're, if you're scared, what would your child be doing? He'll be looking at you or you'll be crying with him. So in that thread and on that tweet, I was saying that, Men are not susceptible to maybe fall into emotion and start crying over certain things and maybe uh, being tears of joy or tears of pain or any of that. It's mostly women who do that, which is nice. It's 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 not it's not derogatory. I'm not trying to denigrate them as maybe cry babies or something. I'm just saying that that's how they and it's 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 actually lovely. It's nice to see a woman showing emotion. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see a woman showing. It's not to see a man showing that kind of emotion. 
especially when when we do not need that kind of emotion from you. We need we need the opposite of it. Even the woman would need the opposite of that from you. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was trying to say. Okay, so you're saying that society should not um, stereotype men for showing their emotions. Yes, yeah, they shouldn't. They, but they, they the should. men need... Yeah, society shouldn't stereotype men for showing their emotions. Emotions should be shown. We are, we are, we are uh, meat bags, actually. We are flesh and blood. Mm-hmm. We, 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 we are emotional creatures. Yes. But when the stacks are down, how do they say it? But when there is a problem, when there is a need to solve a problem, mm-hmm. sometimes we would need the man to solve it. At that point in time, okay, for example, I gave an example on that trade I told you about mm-hmm. um, men. I gave an example when a friend of mine, she lost her dad. She called me that morning and was crying and crying. Her dad just died and this and that and that. I was like, okay. And I felt bad. I actually cried because I have known her for at least 15 years. Mm-hmm. So actually when she told me, I cried. Actually, I shed tears. I cried in my room. Then when I finished crying, I stood up and I went to her place. When she saw me, she ran to me crying and crying and I held her I didn't cry it's not as if I did not cry but I did not cry in front of her mm-hmm. you understand so yeah I'm not saying I felt emotion I was sad and I cried at home before I went to see her and she held me I held her and she was crying and crying and crying and crying and crying and crying and crying her sisters she had sisters sisters were also crying her mother was crying elsewhere but her brothers one of them had already started moving the corpse from the hospital to the mortuary or to the morgue. Mm-hmm. So that one was already running around the house trying to ensure that everything was going well with power, with supplies and everything. They just lost their fathers. So you see that there was a difference between what the women were doing and what the men were doing on a general level. Even I, who was a man, who was an outsider, the difference was that I did not come there and start crying with her. Oh, you lost your dad. I already cried. But mm-hmm. I didn't come to show it to her. I had to do something. I had to comfort her because she called me. Mm-hmm. And she did not expect me to come and to, to start crying with her too. Expecting me to comfort her, which I wouldn't have been able to do with tears gushing out of my eyes and all that. I don't know if you understand through this example. Yes, and I appreciate the example um, for sharing that personal example. So I do. And, and so for any man, you know, I, I've, I've talked to a few men I, I bought some of your tweets as well. And, you know, they wish they have the, the strength and the, <laughs> the words to describe the feelings that they do have sometimes in these types of situations, um, because the expectations are so great when it comes to men showing their strength in, in settings of grief, for example, or in any setting that um, the expectations of men being, as you said, masculine. Um, the pressure to perform, right? The pressure to perform the masculine role is not easy. So thank you for sharing that vulnerable aspect of it. And maybe me even using the word vulnerable may not necessarily be able because it's okay to be, right? <laughs> right. All right. Um, okay. So... You said here, feminism is much more than that. Feminism isn't about um, about that. And I'm thinking there was something that you were alluding to before. So-called feminists defend every crime women commit with men have, have been going, uh, men have been doing uh, worse for ages. We will judge your movement based on what we experience from your members. Yes, exactly. You know how sometimes because most of my tweets are actually based on the feminism I see on Twitter, which I don't see feminism on the streets. I don't go out and see anybody saying I'm a feminist or doing feminist kind of thing. So it's only on Twitter I get to see feminists talking about feminism and everything. And when some things happen, and for example, when misandries, in some of my tweets, I, I try to differentiate feminists and misandries. There was a tweet of mine, if you saw it, I said, 
that a feminist is say you forgot the exact words I mean, but I was like you will always respect a feminist. You may never like her or you may not like her, but you respect her because mm -hmm. feminists actually fight women's rights in their small way, mm -hmm. in the little ways. But misandrists are different. You don't like them. You don't respect them. They are vile. Mm. Or they can also be radical feminists. So sometimes I mix them up, but there are times I actually differentiated between feminists and misandrists. On mm. Twitter, I get to see more of misandrists than feminists. And they, they slap the tag feminists on their foreheads. And that's what many people now see them as. It's no longer a respectable movement that fights for women who are maltreated by men, which they are women who are maltreated by men. Mm -hmm. They are. There are women who are denied opportunities. I'm not talking about the one I gave you about my school. There are women who are actually, actively denied opportunities. They are. They yeah. exist. There mm -hmm. are women who face discrimination in many parts of the world. Yes. They exist. Yes, I know about that. So mm -hmm. I respect the feminists fighting for that. But the ones who come and they, when, for example, we have a woman who killed a man, and we're trying to say, okay, this is wrong. And someone would come and say, uh, men have been killing their wives for ages. That's it's a justification for that. So what does it mean? Are you trying to say that because men have been maltreating women for ages, which is not all men. It's not as if it's a mainstream thing that men have been, men have been killing themselves for women. Men have been fighting and dying for women. But there are some men who, who have been very, very discriminatory towards women. It has happened, okay, yes. Does it mean then that we should we should not judge women who do certain things? We should not we should not um, call out women doing certain things because maybe men have been doing it, or maybe a situation where you have domestic violence from mm -hmm. woman on a man. There was one we saw a week ago. It was bad, very bad videos and all that. And you had some women saying maybe he did something to her. That's a justification. It's not, you're not talking about that. She's doing something wrong. She's, she could kill him. She was, was breaking bottles and using them and everything. So you shouldn't just, the first thing you should, you should say shouldn't be, maybe he did something to warrant it. It's, it's, it's not being fair. So that's what I was actually talking about. And then when you call out those misandries who try to defend everything, mm -hmm. men have been doing it, or maybe that fault, you have someone come to say, uh, we will we'll, we'll say, we will say, all these feminists are like this. These feminists are like this, and someone will come and say, you do not know the meaning of feminism. Feminism is not about this. But regardless of the dictionary definition of feminism, those who call themselves feminists, they are not doing that. They are doing this, and this is what we don't like. And we'll judge them by what we are seeing because, as you said, social media is an educative platform. When people come on social media, they do not get a a a, a, a dictionary PDF explaining feminism. They don't get that. They get to see those who have feminists on their bios or those who identify as feminists doing things, saying things on Twitter or on social media. When they come in, they see these things being done and said and they take it, ah, this is what a feminist is or this is who a feminist is. You can't take that from them. You can't start taking them to school and educating them. You can't start sending them books they read on the history of feminism. You can't do that. That is what they know. So we will, as I said, we will judge you by what you do, not mm -hmm. what you say. Okay. So that's what you have so sh should we define who is a feminist or the feminists define themselves? Should, so, should like, there be no, no. A, a, a body that determines who is a feminist? Because you, you're, you're on a continuum. You're saying there's feminists and they're the misandrists. So who should, who are, who is qualified? to define someone as a feminist and who is not? What do you think? Hmm, who's qualified to define a feminist? Well, I think the only ones who are qualified to define feminism are the ones who started feminism. And we should take their definition as the only definition of feminism. Are the only ones who, could you repeat that? The ones who started feminism are the ones okay. who can define it. They are the ones who began it. So they can tell us, okay, this is why we actually became who we became or what we became. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so their definition should be, should 
be the only definition of feminism. Okay. We can't change. We can't. We can't come today and say, okay, we've changed the definition of feminism. It's no longer fighting for women's rights. Now we want women to dominate men. That's not feminism. You're doing something else. The definition stands. The definition stands. So let's say on a continuum, then someone say, well, you know what? I have feminist feminist views. However, I may not necessarily fit into this particular category. And um, however, you know, you, as you mentioned, you're seeking e equality for women and so on. Uh, you know, this conversation can go on and on, um, not just in terms of gender um, or women's, or, you know, even from, you know, male's perspective on their position in society and so on. Um, but what I like about what you're bringing to the table is because sometimes, or should I say in the past, from my experiences, working with men, working with women, having conversations like these, um, when men do speak out or speak up about their different uh, views about women's position in society or women's role or behavior, it's not always, it's not well received. It's usually um, you know, if, if you're not careful, it can be even categorized under um, abuse in some ways, um, it, you know, in being careful. So, uh, but the way that you do it, um, there's so much honesty to it. And there's also women agreeing with you on some of these stuff, but there's so much, you know, there's so many holes that could, you know, we could poke at and dig in um, to, to understand women's position in society, what is actually happening when they ask for equality, but then it doesn't appear to be as if women's um, idea of equality really is inclusive of men as well. Um, and so there's so much to talk about. And then on the other hand, you're gonna have people talking, you know, using your views and say, well, what about race as well? And bring that in. But we're just exclusively like, talking about women. So I thank you for your time, Emmanuel. I know you have to run. Um, but at any point that, you know, you wish to further this conversation, um, please do reach out. You have so much, you could even create a book from this. I could take your information and create a book as well, as well, because it is so insightful and it can generate so much argument, especially as you mentioned, like in a sociology class, these, these type of, um, the way that you articulate it, sometimes the ideas are there, but it's not as clearly articulated as the way that you put it. So I just want to encourage you to continue to put your points out, regardless of how it may fall. You know, I may not agree with everything, but I try to be as neutral to kind of understand from both perspectives. So thank you for your time. And you have the last word. What do you want to say? Um, well, I appreciate this. And I hope it won't be misconstrued out there. No. Uh, when you said misconstrued in, in, in terms of what? What do you mean? Uh, maybe those who get to see it, if they get to see oh. it, would maybe they wouldn't misunderstand things I said. Right. But, you know, we can't control that, can we? So <laughs> because no. then, then, then we're, we're, we're moving each day by, um, by fear and that I'm sure it doesn't sound as if that's what your concerns are here. So you have to just move with power, right? So thank you for your yeah. time and hopefully, you know, I get to read a lot more um, about your views and just dig in. All right. Thanks again, Emmanuel. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. Bye.